So what is open intelligence? Open intelligence, if we just stop thinking for a moment, what remains when we stop thinking? Alertness, clarity, the power to know. That is open intelligence, inseparable from you. So we just stop thinking just for that moment to identify open intelligence. Open intelligence is in thinking. Open intelligence is in no thinking. We also say in the Balance You Training that open intelligence is inseparable from data. Now data is anything we can perceive, any thought, any emotion, any sensation, people, places, and things. We simply call all of that data to keep it very simple. We don't need a lot of complicated elaborations on people, places, and things in order to make sense out of our lives in order to feel empowered, in order to recognize open intelligence at the basis of all of these descriptions. So that's why we simply call it data. And in some of the other talks you've heard, points of view. And another word for open intelligence is clarity. So whatever you'd like to call it, open intelligence and data are completely inseparable. Like this breeze is inseparable from the air. Open intelligence is the basis of all of our data. It's the basis of thinking. It's the basis of emotions, the basis of sensations. Without open intelligence, you wouldn't know you are. You wouldn't have any thoughts. You wouldn't have any emotions. You wouldn't have any experience. So open intelligence, it's always on. It's who you are. Now, it's always been there. And, and you might ask, well, what difference does it make if we recognize open intelligence or continue on in the same way that we have been continuing on? Well, a life of conventional intelligence is placing all of the importance and emphasis on the descriptions, placing all the importance and emphasis on the actual data, giving it an independent power and meaning of its own accord. And you see, data are completely seamless, countless, impermanent, always changing. The thoughts, they just, they're like a flow. You're just having a flow of thoughts. Emotions arise, they subside. Sensations arise, they subside. They're always fleeting, fleeting appearances. Now, when we place all of the emphasis on the descriptions, if we're trying to base well-being or trying to find our optimal way through life on fleeting appearances, it can be very challenging and can be confusing and frustrating and whatever it is. So, you know, we're learning a new way to really have this really balanced perspective on life rather than focusing in on all of the descriptions of data, getting lost in the myriad of descriptions, to really having a balanced view. <coughs> like being on top of a mountain and seeing everything clearly. The basis of all of our thoughts, emotions, sensations, whether they're positive, negative, or neutral, is open intelligence. They're completely inseparable from it. And, you know, with negative data, negative descriptions, say, for instance, we're having negative thoughts, we're worried about going home after the end of this four-month season, and we're not quite sure what we'll do next. You know, I can remember before I met the training, I spent all of my time worrying about what to do next. So for me, that felt afflictive because I just spent a lot of time and energy worrying about what would be the next best thing to do. And, you know, I just kept on emphasizing all the thoughts that I had, all the emotions, all the sensations around a, a simple choice. And I just got lost in that whole description. You know, that's indulging in the description. And I didn't have a balanced perspective. You know, it just became more and more clouded with 
just all of the, the negative descriptions that I had placed on that one choice. So that's, <clears throat> that's what it's like when we get lost in the description of conventional thinking. Now here we take short moments whenever we naturally remember to do so. Just let the train of thought do what it does. Emphasize open intelligence. That open intelligence we identified when we stopped thinking. It's relaxed, it's potent, and it's clear. In this very moment there's nothing you need to decide. relaxed and at ease. You know, it's important to recognize this in the moment because then you can see that no matter what situation you find yourself in, you actually have this great capacity to still be at ease regardless of what's going on. Even in a very tense situation, at the basis, you recognize there's an ease and a potency available to you. But we won't ever recognize this if we're constantly lost in the descriptions of data. If we're always describing how we feel, how we think, and describing it to other people, oh, I'm having a bad day, I'm grumpy, I, I don't know what to do next, what do you think, uh, I don't like going there because that, those people there, they don't, I don't get along with them, and I don't like how they behave, and you know, it just it creates an endless story of judgments and you know for me it didn't create any well-being just getting lost in those descriptions so you see that's why it's important to test short moments of just allowing everything you're thinking feeling and sensing to be as it is and recognize open intelligence emphasize open intelligence from open intelligence you start to have this ability to make clear and wise decisions that are really effortless. Practically, what I started to do was stop getting so wrapped up in what I thought was best only for me. I could see that no matter where I was, I could rely on short moments. And just having more and more insight into the situation about what was needed. So relaxing every time I felt stressed about making a decision. And since I was committed to trying this training out, every time I felt stressed about making the next choice, being in a transition period, I chose to just let it be as it is and see what would naturally unfold. You know, not placing all the emphasis on the fear and worry of what might be the outcome or what might I miss out on. And I started to relax more and more. And there was more ease, and just the decision-making became much easier. And you can test this with physical sensations. You know, rather than totally getting lost in everything you're feeling, if you're not feeling well, and you're just making a huge story about, oh, my health is really going down now, I, maybe I should go see a doctor, what's going on, maybe it's cancer, maybe, maybe it's the medicine I took, you know, all of this elaborate story that we make about it, just relax. Just stop putting all the emphasis on the labels. You'll start to recognize, you know, there is a perfect health regardless of what's appearing. Open intelligence is the perfect state of health that we're looking for. In Balanced View we have the Four Mainstay Support Network. So the first mainstay is short moments of open intelligence repeated many times until that goes continuous. Open intelligence is already continuous. It's always on. So short moments, it's just recognizing open intelligence again and again until it becomes more obvious than all of the descriptions of data. You can use the analogy of the sun rising. At night, there's a million stars and planets in the sky, and then when the sun rises, you eventually, you don't see any of them, but they're still up there. When you rely on short moments, eventually all of your descriptions of everything, they just start to become less and less recognized. And there's a, a natural flow in life, this spontaneous altruism, finding that our energy and, and time and resources are clearly used for the benefit of all. They're not used in some vague way anymore. 
So the short moments, I mean, that really starts to bring this about. And the second of the mainstays is the trainer. It's, it's, the trainer is like a guide, somebody who's gone up the mountain before us, who has, has tested the terrain, and they know all of the pitfalls along the way, so they can point them out. And they, you know, a guide only wants to help you get to the top. They don't, they don't have any other agenda but to get you to the top. And that's what the trainer is. Somebody who just wants to really reveal to you your totally empowered identity. Showing you that you're not a victim of your thoughts, emotions, and sensations. And revealing to you, you have amazing capabilities to be of benefit to this world. Even if you think you have nothing to offer. So the second is the, the trainer. The third of the mainstays is the training. And all of our training media. So just like hearing in these open meetings, we're talking about the, the true nature of, of our identity, empowered open identity. We have many, many free talks available, many free books. They're all available online, so you can download them and just, you listen to talks, you watch videos from other trainers, you, you watch participants sharing their direct experience. The texts are amazing and they just evoke this instinctive recognition of open intelligence. The texts are so powerful, they just start to burn off all of those years of data reification, giving all this power to all of our descriptions. All of that just starts to melt away. And then the fourth mainstay is the community. You know, we want to see this in, in action. We don't want to hear just a bunch of words about how this is really a powerful and beneficial training. We want to see it in action. What is the result of the training? Do we see many people all over the globe really finding out their empowered identity and being able to collaborate, work together harmoniously, and provide benefit to all? And this is what we see. This is what we see here in Goa. This is what we see in Sweden and England, every country. Many, many countries, you know, all over the world, people hearing about open intelligence as their identity and something ringing true with them, something resonating. And then, you know, just wanting to share it with each other. You know, I, I personally was quite tired of just spending my time with friends complaining about things and criticizing things. You know, I was really ready to find some solutions. Action orientation rather than just sitting around complaining all the time. And you know, this is what the communities are. We're, we're in action. We're training up together, relying on open intelligence, you know, claiming this power for us, claiming the power of the people and really demonstrating how effective the training is and how effective the community is. So you know, there's nothing, there's nothing all that special going on in terms of simple human relating. You know, we come together here at the center in the morning that the kitchen team is in there making a delicious breakfast, many people working together, facing challenges along the way, but not shutting down in the challenges. That would be indulging in the descriptions of data. And that's what we've committed not to do. So we come, if we're having a good day or a bad day, we're in the kitchen, we're making breakfast together. Through the practice of short moments, we find we're no longer so judgmental. You might still have judgmental thoughts just popping in and out through your mind stream, but that's not the focus of attention. Very practically, that's how it works. If you're not focusing all your time and energy onto the judgmental descriptions, there's more and more openness, a natural ease. This altruism, meaning that we deeply care for another person, regardless of if we have a judgmental thought about them. And there's no reason to hook on to that and say, this is, this is how it is. It's just like a line drawn in water or in air. Where is that judgment now? It arises and it releases, and then there's the next thought, the next emotion, the next sensation. Just a seamless flow. And somebody asked about antidotes, and well, it's, um, antidotes is when we use something to 
make us either feel better or to get rid of something unwanted, to a replacement technique. I mean, we all know what antidotes are. There's many, many, many antidotes. Everyone has their unique favorite antidote that they like to use. But, you know, relying on short moments, the antidotes naturally, they fall away. They become less and less interesting, and at some point you find that you're not using any antidotes. Now, it's important to see, though, that, you know, if you like to do things, if you really enjoy whatever it is that you're doing, I mean, there's no, we don't want to take this training into extremes now and say that all you can do is short moments and nothing else. I mean, you take short moments with every single situation you find yourself in. You take short moments whilst doing the things you enjoy. Really allow yourself to enjoy it. it it's not a, a technique to become dull and boring where you never ha experience anything fun anymore. We always experience fun here at the center. I mean, like I was saying, if you're not so focused on all the self-judgments and the criticisms, you, you start to lighten up. I mean, there's just more of a, a light humor and, you know, activities become fun. You look forward to, to an adventure, but you don't base your well-being on it either. If you don't get to have that next adventure in the next country or the whatever it is, you find that that's just not the focus of attention anymore. It's not such a big deal if something doesn't come through that you really wanted. You know, you're able to just stand up tall and go forward and actually find more and more solutions. There's always an opportunity for something. You know, I've just found that, you know, endless possibilities have opened up to me. There's a, a really a flexibility to choose how I want to live my life no longer limited by conventional ideas of a career, a relationship, wh which country to live in. So then it doesn't matter, we can, you know, I, I like to plan a little bit ahead, but not so far ahead, because I never really know where the training will be in a few months. But, you know, like we know we'll be here next year, so we can plan for that. But in between, it's just kind of an open template. You know, you, you start to recognize you have skills that will serve you in every situation. It's like you become more and more talented at, at everything. You find that you could, you could take any job, but you also find you have clear discernment. What job would you like to take? How would you like to spend your time and money? Who do you want to spend your time with? You know, would you like to spend your time with supportive people, or do you want to just go on, continuing on with people that are kind of negative and not really supportive. But it's up to you how you want to really create your life from this context of benefit. The benefit of all. I mean, once you start seeing that there's benefit for yourself, you know, you, we see that, okay, all of the internal judgments, when we let them be as they are, there's much more appreciation for yourself and a gentleness, acknowledging, maybe for the first time, our real gift strengths and talents, acknowledging that we really can love ourselves. So that's really important that, you know, the benefits for ourselves as well. That makes it so much easier to benefit others when we recognize the benefit in, our, in ourselves. Very practically, look at what are the benefits you receive from being in the training setting, being around the community, from taking short moments. I, I found so much benefit from taking short moments. It relaxed the need for so many antidotes. You know, there were so many things I felt I needed in order to relax and to feel confident and to feel smart. And all of that just naturally fell away, and I felt naturally confident, naturally intelligent, at ease and relaxed, without all the effort. Being able to relax in every moment, being in a stressful situation, taking short moments. You no, know, not looking for that sensation to necessarily go away or the emotions, but just really tapping into the ease at the basis. All those swirling descriptions, 
recognizing them as the dynamic display of open intelligence, not as an enemy. So yeah, I don't feel like I've given up things I used to love doing. You know, I just find there's more and more space to do more and more things that I like. And, you know, of course, I, I prioritize being in the training and coming to the centers. And, you know, maybe I'm not spending all this time doing all these other adventures that I used to do, but, you know, that's not a concern of mine anymore. So, yeah, really, it's up to you how you want to spend your time and, you know, find this balance, find a way to really utilize the four mainstays a support network for life. Wherever you go, you can, you've got the, the audio, the video, you can call in to one of the teletrainings, you can reach the community online. You have to test it out, you have to try it to see how it works. If you've never been on a clarity call before, you just, you need to call in to see how it actually is. You could hear a thousand descriptions from everyone, for me it's like this, for me it's like this. But until you test it, you'll never really know in your own experience. It's like trying to describe what honey tastes like to you. You would never understand what honey tasted like for, due to my description. You would need to taste it. Test the short moments, allowing all the descriptions to be as it is for short moments and see what starts to happen. Test out the four mainstays. See what starts to happen. Then you'll have a taste of open intelligence, and it, it just becomes more and more flavorful and more intense and more delicious.